my friends welcome to this episode of the outdoor gear review i just got here to lone wolf mountain started with the sony it started raining now i'm here with the gopro what i need to do is to set up a tarp real quick then we can talk a little bit more <laughs> i love trips like this All right, everyone, that's a good start to the trip. I got the tarp set up. I have a dry spot, at least for the time being. And I say that because the winds could pick up later on today. Who knows? Here in the mountains, anything is possible. While I sit and wait for the rain to cease, I might as well do it in comfort and sit in a chair. The weather for this trip is going to be a mess. It's going to be wet, it's going to be damp, just the way I like it, you know what I mean? Ah, here comes the rain again. <laughs> I came out for this trip thinking that it was going to rain later on this afternoon, but as you all can see, it is on and it feels good. It's cooling things down. Right now the temperature is around 61 degrees, which is very comfortable. My plan is to go ahead and set up my tent to begin with, and I'll do that underneath this tarp. I have the dry space, why not use it? That's a benefit to carrying a tarp with you. Here in the United States, at least, most tents do not feature a fly first design, so you have to set them up basically in dry conditions, otherwise you'll get water on the inside of the tent. The tent that I'm using for this trip is from Nature Hike. This is the Bear Ultralight 2 tent. This is very, very interesting. And you will see why in just a minute. These poles, everyone, they are ridiculous. They are so incredibly long. With this tent, it does feature a fly first pitch, but I couldn't remember if I shut the doors or not, and it doesn't look like I did. So if I got it out in the rain, the inside would have gotten wet. This is a weird feature to this tent. So you have this pole that basically gives you something to attach items to on the inside of the tent. So it begins up here at the top. On the outside, there's a hole. And it goes through that hole into the body, all the way across to the other side, and then out. It's really strange. I've never seen this before. Look at that. There's a hole in the side of the tent and it goes through and the pole goes over here through another hole and then connects over here. In addition to testing out this tent, I also have a new sleeping pad. This one's from Teton Sports. That is the one thing that I did not charge for this trip. I am now sealing up the fly, which is on the inside of the tent. Now I'm shutting up the door. That's right, folks. This tent features an internal fly, just like the Skyena tent from One Tigris. I just looked at the radar and it looks like there's more rain on the way, so I'm going to go ahead 
and get my bed all set up. I do have a full gear list in the description box down below if there's something that you're interested in. <laughs> I mentioned a moment ago that this tent features an internal fly. Let me explain what that means exactly. You can see you have this lip here, right? This is part of the fly. But when you go down to the door, the rest of the fly is on the inside of the tent, which means when it's raining, the water comes down, hits this mesh, hits that fly, and hopefully does not go inside of this tent. I want to show you all something rather interesting. Once I show this to you, I'm only going to talk about it for just a minute because I want to talk about it in more detail later on. But I was coming down here to take a look at the sky when I found this. What is so interesting about this is that this is the second black snake that I've seen today. <laughs> I saw a slightly larger one earlier before. Now that's a black racer. And again, I'll talk about these snakes in more detail in just a minute. First, there's something that I want to do. I have a nice flat location right here for my chair, but I need something for my table. And I think this is going to work just fine. But what I need to do is level this out because this is rather steep. We are on the side of a hill here. Perfect, perfect conditions. So what I'm going to do here is make some lunch. We might as well make some coffee too. This is one of the most unique stoves I have ever seen. I've had this for numerous years now. It's from Soto, which is a Japanese company. I absolutely love it. It is so unique, so strange. It's special to me, I really, really like it. So this is a cassette stove, Soto. Check this out. <laughs> Look at that. How different. My friends, cheers. Cheers to you all. Oh yeah, that is actually quite good. <laughs> to me, some people may say that's disgusting. I don't know, but I like it. Now with this trip, now that I have time to sit down and actually talk to you all, 
This is just a simple camping trip here at Lone Wolf Mountain. Originally, my plan was to come out, camp here at Lone Wolf Mountain, and I was going to focus my attention on the spring. I was going to begin working on it. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. It is so rainy, so wet, so sloppy. I could go work on it, but I would be covered in mud by the time I'm done because it's so sloppy. So I think I'm going to hold off on that for now, and I'll do that in a later episode. But. As far as this campsite goes, you all may remember this. I started working on this maybe four or five months ago, something like that. With this location here, it is sloped. It is on a hill, but I've always liked it. I've always liked the view from here. So I decided to turn this into a campsite. So I leveled a spot for the tent. I leveled a spot for my chair. And that was pretty much all the time that I had. So I stopped there. This is without a doubt a work in progress. I need to dig a fire pit and decide where I want that exactly. I'm still not 100% sure. Yeah, I'll figure that out in a little bit. I have some rock for it over here. If you all remember in that episode, I also put down some mulch on the ground. And that's because the soil here features a lot of clay, so it becomes really, really muddy as soon as moisture falls. The mulch itself really does help keep that mud down. So I can walk around on top of this mulch and I don't have to worry about mud, which is incredibly nice. While I have my lunch, I figured I would go over some of the questions, some of the comments that I've seen in the videos, namely in regards to the setting up of this campsite and also some recent adventures. Because the channel's so big and there's so many comments, I can't go through them all and answer them. So when I see a, a theme, I will address them in videos. So, so to start off, when it comes to this campsite here that I built, again, it's on a slope. I noticed that some viewers stated that I should have built basically a retaining wall for the camp pad, for the tent pad. In that episode, I mentioned something very important. I stated that the soil here has a very high clay content. There's a lot of clay in it. It's because of the high clay content in this soil that I did not need to do that. Let me show you all what I'm talking about. This is where people were saying that I needed a retaining wall. But as you can see, check that out. This has not moved since I leveled this out. And that's because of the clay in the soil. I don't want to get too geeky about this, so I will keep it simple. When it comes to soil, it's composed of three different elements, sand, silt, and clay. It's the percentage of each component that determines the overall texture of the soil and also the water holding capacity. Now, just in case you don't know this, the water holding capacity of the soil is this. Basically, it's, it's the soil's ability to physically hold water against the forces of gravity. The easiest way to explain this is this. Take sand for an example. Sand gives up the water between the pores much easier than silts or clay. And because of that, sand could be easily washed away. When you have clay, that's not the case. Clay has the ability to physically hold water molecules much more tightly. And because of that, clay does not wash away to the same extent. Again, I did all of this maybe three, four, five months ago, and it hasn't moved at all. Another series of comments that I saw, which I thought I would mention or address, was the mulch. For some reason, people thought that was going to attract ticks. First off, you should assume that ticks are going to be around no matter what. So make sure to treat your clothing and your skin properly. With that being said, this mulch is a combination of pine and cedar. Now here's something interesting. Cedar oil, which comes from cedar bark, will kill ticks. It liquefies their body fat and causes them to die of dehydration. So you will not find ticks on cedar bark. That's another reason why I put this down. But again, everyone, that really doesn't matter. Even if you do something like this yourself for your own campsite, you should go ahead and plan for there to be ticks around you, for there to be ticks present. So treat your clothing, your shoes, your socks, and even your gear if you want. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Next, my friends, in a previous episode, I came across a black racer snake and I shared that with you all. There was only one comment on this, but I thought I would share this information with you all just so you can know the difference. That individual stated that the snake I saw was a blue racer, not a black racer. That individual was wrong, and here's why. Blue racers and black racers, they are different snakes completely. And when you know the difference between the two, you're not going to confuse them. As you all can see, there are differences between the two. First off, when it comes to black racers, black racers are completely black and they have smooth and glossy scales. Blue racers are bluish, greenish, gray, and even sometimes brown in color. The color of their scales is very flat, not shiny at all. And here's one of the most important things. There aren't blue racers here. 
Blue racers are generally found in the center of the United States, not in the east. In the east, we have black racers. Another difference between the snakes is that black racers are quite a bit bigger than blue racers. I think the record for a blue racer is like six foot, where like the record for a black racer is around eight, maybe even nine feet. Black racers can be huge, huge snakes. And that one that we saw was gigantic. Talking about snakes, as soon as I got here at Lone Wolf Mountain, I came across one in the road. So that was further down on the mountain. I stopped the truck, got the camera, filmed him just a little bit. That is a cool snake. Fast forward a few hours, it just got done raining. I went down to the truck to get something. And what do you know? There's another black snake, a different one. The one I saw down there, I think was around four feet. This guy was around four and a half feet, five feet. He was pretty long. It really does make me happy to see these snakes because black snakes, black racers, they are terrific. They're very good snakes to have on your property. And I've mentioned this before, so I won't go into it again, but they're good to have. By the way, for lunch, we have a real termat meal. This is reindeer stew, and it is fantastic. Let's go see if this tent has leaked. So far, so good folks. No leaking from this tent. So far everyone, there's been no leaking from the Nature Hike Bear tent. And I really didn't expect it to leak. Nature Hike knows how to make waterproof tents. My biggest question is, how bad is the condensation going to be? Because <laughs> this is a single wall tent. And yeah, condensation is gonna be a factor with this. Tonight we'll see just how well it goes or how bad. Check this out, everyone. A viewer sent this to me. This is pretty neat. It unfolds like this so that you can carry firewood in it. To the viewer who sent this in, thank you so very much. Your name escapes me at the moment, but I will flash it on the screen. Thanks, buddy. The sun has popped out for a second here. I think I'm going to use this time to gather some firewood. I sure do love the smell of this soil. 
I was talking about clay earlier. It's amazing what you can do with it. It's amazing how strong it can be. As far as this material goes, it's damp. Because these showers can pop up at any time, I decided to go ahead, get this fire going. We will enjoy this as long as we can. We still have a little bit more than an hour of light left before it's dark. As far as the day goes, for you all, it's only been raining a few minutes, but for myself, it has been raining all day. But I tell you what, that's okay, because I've had a great time. I've been chilling underneath this one tigress tarp, having a good time. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like just being underneath the tarp, listening to the rain, it's really, really nice. Really, really nice. And now we have the fire going here in a minute. I'll make dinner. As far as dinner goes, let's see, what do we got? We have another real termat meal. This one is pulled pork with rice. This stuff is so good. It's so good. Let's don't wait. Let's go ahead and make it. Here's a little tip for you all when you're using a tarp that has a lot of tie-off points. Take some cordage and tie from one center point to another center point. Once you've done that, you have a line that can hold your lantern, your headlamp. It could even dry out your clothing and your gear. The other day, folks, I was at my friend's house, my neighbor, and he was showing me his latest like exercise machine. I have to say, it was probably one of the coolest pieces of equipment I've ever seen in my entire life. It is truly an advancement in technology. Based upon how cool it was, I'm sure the thing cost a fortune. It is a machine called Tonal, the Tonal, I don't know. But basically it looks like a television that has been like tilted straight up and down. And on the sides you have these bars with like pulleys. It is incredible. It is incredible. I did a quick 20 minute workout on this thing that has left me so sore. <laughs> I should look it up and see how much it costs, but I'm not going to. It is pretty wild. Have you all heard of one of those or tried one or have one? If so, comment down below or shoot me an email. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. My neighbor, he loves his and I can see why. I think one of the coolest things to it is that like there's a certain mode to it where as you're like working out you're doing whatever it progressively gets harder and harder as you're doing it so it just stacks on that weight so you can end up getting a better workout with this machine simply for the fact that you don't have to make any adjustments or get heavier weights it automatically does it for you that is incredible it is so slim so small I was super super impressed again I'm a little bit concerned about the price I'm sure that thing cost a fortune it's pretty slick. And plus, this day and age, everything costs a fortune, so. The most important thing you have to keep in mind when it comes to working out. Well, actually, there's a few things. First off, don't push yourself too hard. You wanna push yourself, but not injure yourself. Also, it's not all about just lifting weights and muscle. You have to focus on your heart. The heart is the most important part when it comes to your entire body. You have to have strength, 
you have to have stamina, you have to be able to react. I think that's so important. And oftentimes that's overlooked. But, um, anyways, dinner is almost ready. Pulled pork with rice. This is really, really good. And if I remember correctly, it kind of tastes like pizza. I know that sounds weird. Pulled pork with rice, it tastes like pizza. <laughs> For some reason, it does. <laughs> It's not like, it tastes like a pizza, I guess. Like full-fledged pizza, but like, there's something about the sauce that's very pizza-esque. No matter what, it is really good though. With the fire here, as you saw before, I dug a small hole. That way, all of the embers and the coals will form in the bottom. It's a great way of gathering a source of heat. And let me tell you, it is hot. It is super, super hot even though the fire itself is rather small. The heat is rising, it's reflecting off of this tarp. I, I'm toasty hot. Here's a little tip for you all. If you don't have a bellows with you, take your fingers and put them together so you have a tiny little diamond within those fingers. Put it up to your mouth and blow. It isolates the air, basically creates a jet stream. You can move your fingers forwards and backwards to determine the direction. It works incredibly well, as you saw. That's the last of the firewood. I think it's gonna get rather chilly tonight. Lows around 48, something like that. For this time of year, that's a little chilly. Yeah, it's almost nine o'clock. And let's see if I can check on the radar. Looks like rain is on the way. Should be here in about an hour. <laughs> and I can't wait, I love it. Nothing is better than being inside of your tent at nighttime with it raining. It's the best sleep that you could possibly get. My plan is just to hang around the fire here for just a few minutes and then call it a night. <sighs> okay. So I just got inside of the tent here and I was opening it up and I, I see a problem. I see a problem. This door has had time to dry. The wind's been coming this direction, drying the door off. The problem is this door, this side is completely wet. It's so wet in fact that I can't open it up, not without getting water inside of the tent. So that's, that's interesting. That greatly limits the airflow coming into this tent. I can open a small part of the top and that'd work but I certainly can't open the whole thing. It is amazing how big this tin is though. I will give it that. I think for wet weather conditions, this is not the best choice, but for drier situations, absolutely. There is a ton of space inside of this. It is waterproof, at least with my testing. With the rain that's fallen so far, it's been moderate and consistent. I mean, it's rained for hours and hours and this tent has not leaked. Since the night is so young, what I'm going to do is watch a movie, one of my favorite movies, Open Range with Kevin Costner. That is an excellent movie.
If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. If you have seen it, comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you think about it? No. Oh, good night for now. Oh man. Oh man. That moment when you get inside your tent, you close your eyes, you're just listening. You hear nothing but like the crickets. Man, that's sweet. I hear absolutely nothing tonight. That's pretty nice. Here comes the rain. I will see you guys in the morning. Not for now. Wish me luck. <laughs> Hopefully the condensation won't be too bad inside of this. Uh, yeah, it's already forming on the walls, but that's to be expected. Condensation when this thing is sealed up is, it's going to be poor, but luckily, as I mentioned before, it's so big, it's passable. Alright, good night everybody. See you soon. Man, how'd everybody sleep last night? <laughs> oh my god. Did I get you? <laughs> oh man. I slept pretty good. But it took a while for me to go to sleep. I don't think I've mentioned this in any videos, but recently I switched over to contacts, so I've mastered getting them in, but I have not mastered getting them out. So it took quite a bit of work to get them out. And with this eye, I think I like pinched my eyeball or something. I don't know. It still hurts. I don't know if it's red or not, but it aches. But uh, yeah. So yeah, my eye was just hurting last night. It was hard to fall asleep. As far as this tent goes, I think this is more of a dry location tent namely because the ventilation is so poor inside of it when you have to seal it up now last night it started raining again it rained for numerous hours it's yeah it's damp in here it's pretty dang damp luckily in between the showers i would unzip the doors just enough to get some airflow The hanging pole inside of this tent is really strange. The fact that it goes through one side and then out the other, there's literal holes in this tent. Because of that, this tent is not 100% bug proof. Ants and stuff could get through those holes. Maybe small spiders too. But that being said though, this tent is waterproof. It did not leak at all. So good job on that front, Nature Hike. Very, very interesting design to this tent. It's definitely different. It is huge, there's no doubt about it. I would say the only real con is that it's somewhat difficult to set up. The poles themselves crisscross and it's very easy to get them mixed up. It would have been nice if the company would have color coded like the sleeves with the poles to the clips because oftentimes you'll get them backwards and it does not set up right. And it's one of those things where you're not going to notice the mistake until you basically have it set up. It is coffee time.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The day doesn't officially start until you have coffee in hand. Cheers. That is really good. Really good. The perfect combination. I'm an expert. Trust me. What we have here is some French Cafe from South Korea. We have some Funky Folgers, which puts hair everywhere. And we have some Folgers Noir coffee. Golden Dusk. Sounds good. Yeah, actually it is good. <laughs> it's a really good combo. Let's check the radar real quick. Right before I got up, it was raining. I wanna see what exactly is going to take place today. Ultimately, what the weather is going to do does not impact what I'm going to do. I have a plan already. What it shows here is basically a 90% chance of showers and thunderstorms starting around noon. Now, what I'm doing today is rather important. I need to go home because I'm having a party. Not for myself, but for Lucas, our son. He is leaving the house. Come next week, he is gone. He's off to college. Life is about to change. I mean, the kids are completely gone. It's just Susie and I. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I don't know. I can't wait. Let's go ahead and give breakfast a shot. We have a real termat chocolate muesli, which is like oatmeal sort of thing. I added a ton of water, so I can actually just drink this from the bag. Mmm, that is ridiculous good. Talking about gear for a second, I've already discussed the tent. The sleeping pad from Teton Sports did great. No issues, very comfortable. Also very inexpensive. That's more of a summertime pad. The R value is very low. When it comes to the One Tigress tarp, it did an excellent job. Someone was asking me about this the other day. That's the reason why I brought it out. I needed to do more testing. I still have more testing to do, but so far, so good. Completely waterproof. Excellent size too. With a little Japanese stove, you know I love it. Have you ever seen any other cassette stoves? That's the only one that I've seen. It is so unique. It's almost weird, but <laughs> I love it. I think it's just so, so cool, so neat. If you know of another cassette stove, contact me. Let me know. I'd be curious to take a look at it. Hmm. Sure is getting dark, folks. Okay, you know what? I think I might hurry and wrap this up. Packing all of this up and breaking it down is going to be easier when it's not raining than when it is. So I think I'm going to wrap this up, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this camping trip. I really appreciate it. This has been an excellent trip out in the rain. Did me some good. It did. All right, everyone. I'm done for now. I hope you all have enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for going camping with me. If you have enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. If you want to support The Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so on Patreon. You can do so on YouTube. You can join the Wolfpack. Also, a merch store has been set up, and you can get hats, jackets, coffee cups, mugs, hoodies, and so on. Plus, more is on the way. Plus, patches are available on the website. Everyone, thank you so much for everything. Take care. Be well. Strength and honor. Let's go celebrate Lucas. Yeah, Lucas. I love you, buddy. I love you. I'm so proud of my kids. Anyways, everyone, I'm done. Strength and honor. Bye for now. <laughs>